Hey gang, so today is gonna to be day six on our trapping grid, but there's really not that much to do. This we've let the weekend serve as our mixing time. So all these traps, these Sherman traps, I'm gonna rebait the backs of them today, and I'm gonna set all these, and also set up those raccoon traps uh, to see if there's anything damaging our traps over this upcoming week, uh, whether we can catch those things and send him a message anyway so today is day six and so what i thought i'd do because there's not much excitement we haven't trapped things over the weekend because we closed them all on friday so day six uh we want to appreciate that we've allowed time for the animals that we marked last week to re uh emerge or to remix in the population so our chance of catching stuff this week compared to last week is is certainly random we hope they've gone back to where they're hanging out and if we recapture them again That'll help us with our data. So anyway, this is day six, but rather than do that, I'm gonna just walk you through a real quick tour of our lab and some of the mammals that we have in our lab. Um, so I'm gonna start over here. So you can see this is a snowshoe hare. Uh, it's the only rabbit of three in Minnesota that actually turns white in the winter. This one was killed in the winter time. Um, but it's a rabbit, we have the cottontail rabbit, which is right over here. Whoa, whoa, that's a cottontail rabbit, very common all throughout Stillwater. Um, and the third type of rabbit, which we have in a box, but I didn't want to take it out as a giant um, jackrabbit, which are in the prairie parts of Minnesota. So it's really kind of interesting. These three rabbits have three different biomes in Minnesota. You have the snowshoe hare. This guy hangs out in the coniferous biome and then the cottontail rabbit kind of hangs out where we live and parts beyond certainly but it's mostly localized to the deciduous forest and then if you go out in the prairie we have these giant jackrabbits they're like eight to 13 pounds big rabbits anyway moving right down the line here this is the red squirrel which we are likely to catch in our traps and next to it is a flying squirrel uh, again we've caught those in our have our in our sherman traps eastern chipmunk we've already caught one of those in our have a heart traps. We have the 13 line ground squirrel. All these critters I'm showing you for the most part are rodents. And um, yeah, we've caught uh, 13 line ground squirrels, especially when you trap closer to the prairie. Anyway, um, woodchuck. And again, we've had these in the ELC. We haven't caught them in our traps, obviously, way too big. Um, this is a uh, muskrat, and you know the pelt is considered valuable enough to trap for. People trap and, and sell pelts of muskrats. They aren't worth a whole lot, but these guys are one of those species in the, in the um, sloughs or in the swamps where they keep open trails for the ducks because they like to eat the cattail. So they do serve a function. They have a job. We call that a niche. Um, and they are preyed upon by these guys right next to them here. This, this is a mink hide. And mink are very valuable for trappers. That's why we have this. A lot of these pelts were donated by the Minnesota Trapping Association. But mink love to eat muskrats in the swamp. And so these guys will be very popular. And all of a sudden a mink will roll into town and they'll start to control that population. This little dude right here. He's so tiny. Look at that. Here's my thumb. Look at that. That's a masked shrew. And we do catch those in our Sherman traps. They're tiny. They go in there not to eat the peanut butter, but eat the, the ants. And so they go in to eat the ants, and they're barely weighty enough to set off the triggers. But we still have caught them. This is, it's got a short tail, so this is a, uh, a vole. And we usually catch the redback voles. This is a meadow vole, so it's gray instead of redback. This is a paramiscus, in other words, a white-footed slash deer mouse. We've caught a lot of those. That's what we're actually studying. This is a mole, not with a V called vole. This is a mole. Some people, there's a star nose mole. Um, I can show you what this dude looks like. Ah, look at these big, giant feet for digging. People hate these things. These are the ones that tear up your yard. So it's a mole, eastern mole, not a vole. The vole over here is very much like a mouse. These two guys do kind of the same kind of stuff. Shrews that we also have. So. We have a couple of squirrels. This is a fox squirrel and a gray squirrel together. The fox squirrel is out in western Minnesota. The gray squirrel is in the deciduous forest where we live. And stereotypically, at least, 
the little red squirrel is um, a northern Minnesota inhabitant. So again, like the rabbits, we have the fox squirrel that hangs out in the prairie. The gray squirrel that hangs out in the deciduous forest. And then the red squirrel over here, which hangs out in the coniferous forest. So like the rabbits, the squirrels are kind of in three different biomes in Minnesota. This is the pocket gopher. Go gophers. Anyway, look at those front claws in that thing. There is still an active bounty. In other words, the law uh, mandates that if you kill a bunch of these in Washington County, you can bring in their little legs and the county office is supposed to pay you for those like five cents of, because they're considered an, an, an agricultural pest. So killing these guys is actually recommended by the state of Minnesota. It's an old law. You'd probably get thrown in jail if you walked into Washington County Government Center with a whole bunch of dead gophers. So this is your typical gopher. Um, and it's uh, they, they love to dig. Hey, we also have bats in Minnesota. Um, it's a little brown bat. We have a couple of those. This is a beaver pelt. Again, kind of a giant, probably the biggest rodent. And these guys are a keystone species. In other words, you know, they block up water systems, especially in mountain estates. They uh, provide uh, great habitat. They actually create habitat for a bunch of other stuff. And then we're kind of slipping into some carnivores here. This is the red fox. We have pictures of those in the Environmental Learning Center. This is a gray fox. These are both pelts. Um, also photographed in the Environmental Learning Center. We have what's called a river otter skin. This is a big animal. It's bigger than a fox. And they hang out in the St. Croix River. Um, trapping, as a general rule, has fallen apart. Nobody traps anymore. And some of these animals, like river otters, you're starting to see them all over Washington County and all over the state of Minnesota, where they used to be a little more rare. When pelt prices were up and more kids used to go trapping, this was one of their favorite targets. But uh, not so much anymore. This is a fisher. It's like a giant mink. It's like a giant weasel family. And this guy you've probably seen squished on the row. This is a possum, possum pelt. They're the only marsupial in Minnesota. And they're the toothiest mammal in Minnesota. So that's kind of cool. They have the most teeth of any mammal in Minnesota. By the way, marsupial implies they have a pouch. They're a pouch mammal like a kangaroo. This is a coyote. Some people say coyote. Some people say coyote but very common in Minnesota and across the United States. These animals can be harvested or hunted year-round. Pelts are best usually in the fall. And next to that is our raccoon. And then um, lastly over here quickly we have a mink which I already pointed out. Very valuable pelt and even more valuable like 150 bucks a pelt by today's standards is a pine martin. So it's in the same family. This isn't a very big pine martin but pine martens, fishers, mink, weasels. I should really have out here my small tiny pelt of a, um, uh, a least weasel, also called the ermine. Some of you did papers on the ermine because that's what we're likely to catch in our small mammal traps. Usually, we haven't caught one yet this year. There's a bobcat uh, pelt. This one you probably know as a skunk. And this one you know as, as the badger, bucky badger. Okay, so anyway. That's kind of a tour of some mammals that we have in Minnesota as you're thinking about what we might trap and that kind of thing. So quick tour, day, today would be day six. So mostly just, we're just gonna uh, open up our traps.